Hey everyone, uh, I've had a few people ask me to make a video about skid plates, namely how to fit them onto a freestyle skateboard. Now, a skid plate is a lump of plastic like this. Um, it's basically like rails, but you put it on the tail instead. The reason we use them in freestyle is we use the tails a lot differently to the way that a street skater or a vert skater would. And without a skid plate, you're liable to completely destroy your freestyle board within a week. I mean, if you're a beginner, it might last a couple of months, but once you get up to a pro level standard, without skid plates, your board's just basically gonna explode. Um, I mean, everyone knows what razor tail is, anyone who's skated for any length of time. Basically, having a skid plate there means you wear away the skid plate, and then if you so, uh, so choose, you can just buy extra skid plates and swap them over, thereby extending the length of your board. Now, a skid plate will cost you, depending on where you get it from, somewhere between three to five pound a plate. Um, it's roughly the same in dollars or euros, you know, three to five euros, and there's a bunch of places you can get them. Normally, places that sell freestyle boards will also offer skid plates, uh, you know, Skate Kings, Moonshine, Decompose Mode, etc. Uh, failing that, if you're in Europe, Jojo Schultz out in Germany, he does great skid plates, these ones are his. Um, there's a guy in Nottingham, England, called Michael Erskine. He makes the moonshine skids, um, you can go to him, but generally speaking, whenever you pick up a freestyle board, get some skid plates. Uh, some places will fit them for you, but just in case they don't, here's how you do it yourself. Okay, so here we have your basic toolkit um, for mounting skid plates. You know, it's not too complicated. Obviously, you've got to have your skid plate and your board. Uh, on this one I fitted the tail skid earlier, we're going to put a nose skid on in a minute. You're going to need some blue tack or similar, something like putty would do, just some way of temporarily holding the skid plate. Uh, the mounting hardware are these things, they're called sex bolts. Uh, I think Powell called them rat nuts in the 80s to prevent the <laughs> sex childish behavior. And all that is, is uh, a regular bolt, countersunk, and then the female end, which is, uh, don't know how to explain that in mechanical or engineering terms, but basically it's just a threaded tube with some knurling at this end, and then almost like a rivet to stop it pulling through the board. Obviously, you want your screwdriver to deal with that, and while I've got a whole tube of drill bits, really you only need three. One of them has to be quite thin, which may be like a two mil. Um, then you want one that roughly matches the female end. So this one's uh, about a 5.5 mil. And then you want one that's fractionally bigger, so this one's a six mil. And obviously, you need your drill. Um, optional is a hammer. You probably won't need this, but it might be handy to have around. And a giant mug of coffee. Okay, so this is going to be my workbench because I live in an apartment and I do not have a garage or even a backyard to do this in. So, toolbox does, does the job just fine. Okay, first thing we need to talk about is where to place the skid plate because while it's obviously going onto the tail you know you don't want it flush if you mount that so it sits dead on the end of the board I don't know if you can see that properly on the camera what's going to happen is eventually you're going to be pogoing just on the plastic and that's a really good way of snapping the mounting hardware and the whole thing comes off at the same time you don't want it so far back that when the skid plate starts to wear down, you end up razor tailing the wood anyway. The one that I fit earlier 
shows how I normally do it. It's kind of roughly about five mil of exposed wood at the end of the board. That way you've got a little bit of a buffer for pogo tricks, but you're never ever going to wear the skid plate down enough that you end up razor tailing the wood. So once you've figured out the best placement, and some skid plates won't perfectly fit uh, the right shape of the board, sometimes you have to make do slightly, you get two tiny, tiny, tiny blobs of this. You really don't want much. Um, you know, whether it's blue tack or putty or white tack in this case, I don't care what you call it. Just down at each end and use that to get the skid plate in roughly the right position. So, squeeze it on, and that looks about right to me. Just a little bit of exposed wood. Now at this point, get your drill, and you're going to take the thinnest of thin drill bits. So, like I said earlier, I think this is a 2 mil. Okay, set the speed of your drill pretty high, because we're going to go straight through the wood with this one. Now obviously if this was a proper workbench, I'd clamp this or something, but we're much too ghetto for that, so I'm just going to keep some weight on that for the left hand. And then what we're going to do is go through the very centre of the skid plate hole, and we've got to be as perpendicular to the wood as possible. Uh, right, so about there. Not even going in. Maybe the battery needs charging. There we go. Same again on the other hole. Right, and at this point, remove the skid plate. Okay, now the reason we've gone through with the small bit first is to prevent complete blowout on the other side of the board. If you go through with the, the thick one, not only are you likely to widen out the holes on the skid plate and end up damaging this, but you can completely knacker up the top side of the board. We don't want that. So now we've got a nice guide as to where to drill with the proper size. So, make sure you've got the right bit, 5.5, for wood, obviously, not masonry. I have seen someone make that mistake. Now you can turn the speed down on the drill slightly, because all we want to do is widen the holes. So, I'm trying to get in the light, and again, keep it as perpendicular as possible. Lovely. There you go. And then when you look on the top, it's a fairly clean hole. Perhaps could have done it a bit better, but it's not too bad. Right. Now the next bit, if I can get that to stay still. Remove your 5.5 mil, whack in your 6 mil. I mean, this is assuming you've got the same sex bolts as I have. Uh, I'm fairly certain they're the sizes yo yo uses. I know they're the ones that come with Mike's skids or the Moonshine skids. I can't speak for Skate Kings, I don't know what they use. Right, and now all we're going to do with this, keep the speed really low, and you just want one. Uh, kind of quick thrust in <sighs> innuendo and um, and then back it back out it's probably enough <laughs> removing the drill bit there we go okay the same again
Right, at this point you're pretty much done. You just gotta mount the hardware. Now the reason we did the slightly wider uh, drill on the top side and not the bottom is what you want is for it to be difficult to get in all the way. You wanna have it push fit up to there and then when the knurling at the top of the female end gets into the board, you want some resistance. This is why I said you might want the hammer. Just in case you want to sit there and tap it in. Now, I tend not to hammer it all the way in. Just leave it sticking out by a mill or so. Because I like drawing the... Uh, drawing the sex bolt through the wood. It's a bit more laborious. <sighs> that hole's clogged up with wood. It's nice, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, it's a bit more laborious, but it means that you get a much, much tighter fit and your skid plate's less likely to come loose. Now, because we drilled through with the small bit to begin with, the holes are exactly lined up. All you've got to do is get the screwdriver in there. Keep one thumb on the female end, just to make sure it's not spinning. It shouldn't, but if you've over-widened the hole, it might. At that point, you're gonna struggle. Um, solution to that, basically, is just much more force on the back. Sometimes put a bit of duct tape on the female end, stop it spinning. Um, but you want to avoid that like a plague. And then just tighten up. You could, in theory, do this with the drill, but I'm not sure I trust mine. It's only a cheap thing. And I find it tends to round off the screws anyway. Right. And there you go, one freshly skidded Moonshine Freestyle board. All that needs now is setting up, um, it's ready to roll. So that's basically it. That's, that's really all there is to it. The only thing I've, I forgot to mention in hindsight is that generally speaking, it's better to put grip on first, then mount the skids. If only because gripping over the skid hardware, not so great. Um, now obviously you can't run skid plates on the top of the board. You wouldn't want to. So the only way of protecting the top side of the board from damage is wood screws. Um, not everyone uses it, it can be a bad move, but if you're going to do a lot of caspers, that's something to consider. Um, now, if anyone's got any other questions on skid plates, something that I've missed, uh, it might seem obvious to me, but you know, I've been doing this for 10 years now, I've mounted more skid plates than I can really think of. Um, you know, let me know, drop a comment under the video. If someone wants help on anything else to do with freestyle setups, whether it's choosing trucks or you know how wheels should line up with things, let me know again. I'll happily do any videos that people need. Hopefully this has been helpful. Um, many thanks to Moonshine for the skateboards. Um, go out and skate. Bye.